Hello and welcome to another fishing tutorial. In this episode, we're gonna look at how to cast accurately. Having consistent accuracy in your fishing will 100% help you catch more fish. There was once a lake we used to fish with a small clay bowl that the carp had dug out next to an island. It was a very tricky cast, but we noticed every single time we managed to get a bait perfectly presented on that spot, we'd get a bite without doubt. If we missed that spot and the rig was placed even a foot away, we would wake up the next morning without a bite. And that was when we realized how important accuracy is. Don't get me wrong though, on some occasions you can pretty much just cast anywhere and you can catch fish. But if you're able to accurately cast close to an overhanging tree or tight to an island or on a specific spot like that clay bowl that we used to fish on, you will definitely see better results. Let's start by looking at how to do a simple overarm cast. One hand is placed near the reel. I normally put three fingers in front of the reel and then the little finger behind the, where the reel attaches to the rod. If you're left-handed like me, your left hand holds the rod. If you're right-handed, you do it the opposite way around, like most people. Like normal people, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then with your other hand, you place it right on the butt of the rod. By holding it right at the end, you get maximum leverage so you can make a really big cast. When getting ready to cast, you need to keep everything in line in order to get a very straight, accurate cast. I will always keep the rod in line with my eyes and the spot that I'm aiming at. If everything stays in line, then your cast will always go in that straight line as well. The amount of line you have hanging down from your rod tip is important to ensure that you can cast easily and accurately. If you have too little line hanging down, it can be very awkward to cast as well as if you have a massive amount of line, it can be impossible to swing it behind you and make a cast as well. I like to reel the line up so that it is half the length of the rod. A good way to mark this is where the two rod sections join together. Uh, the butt eye is also a good place to reference that too. So once you're all lined up and you've got the correct amount of line hanging down from the rod tip, take the line under your forefinger against the rod, open the bail arm, swing the rod back slowly, and then make the cast. The angle which I try to aim a cast at is 45 degrees. But in some situations, this needs to be altered. For example, if there's a strong crosswind, then casting low is important. If you cast high up, there's a good chance that the wind will catch that line and blow your rig and line out of place. Another time to aim low is when you're trying to cast under overhanging trees on say a far bank. If you cast high, there's a good chance that your rig will catch those trees on the way down. But in most fishing situations, a standard rule would be to cast at 45 degrees. Next up, we're gonna look at how to cast the exact same distance every time. When fishing at short range, it's possible to cast to the same spot every time, just using your eyes. However, when casting further out into the lake, it's impossible to get to that same spot every time and you need to use your line clip. On all fishing reels, there is a line clip on the spool. To clip up a fishing rod, simply make a cast to the spot that you want to fish. Once you're happy with that, move your rod 90 degrees to the water and put that line in the line clip on the spool. Reel in the lead and make another cast, but make sure you lift that rod to 90 degrees before you hit the clip. This will cushion the clip. If you hit the clip too hard, there's a chance that you'll break your line or the rig will bounce back. Double check the distance is perfect and depending on where that lead landed, if you'd like to go a tiny bit further, you can just pull a foot or two off the reel before clipping that up again. On the other hand, if you'd like to come a bit back towards you, you can reel a bit more onto the spool and then clip up. One important thing to remember when you're fishing on a clip is to always stand in the same place whenever you make a cast. Now with the use of some distance sticks, you can find out the exact distance of your cast and make a note in your phone and always get back to the same spot. Distance sticks are basically two bank sticks with smooth edges, which you place in the ground a rod length apart. You place your lead at one end and simply wrap the line around until you reach the clip. Count the number of wraps and make a note of this so you don't forget. Now you know how many wraps you're fishing, you can now clip up your other fishing rods to the same distance or even a spawn rod, so you can bait up accurately too. Something we always do when making a cast is stop that lead before it hits the water. If we're using a line clip, hitting the clip will do this for us. If not, 
then it's always a good idea to put your finger on the spool or grab the spool just before your lead hits the surface. This avoids the lead hitting the water at great speed and making a big splash of disturbance. Stopping your lead before it hits the surface also straightens out your rig and stops tangles in flight. It also helps with feeling the lead down. Learning to feel the lead down is important not only for finding out how deep the water is in front of you, but you can also find out what is on the lake bed. Once you've hit the clip or stopped the rig with your hand, keep the line tight and let the weight of the lead pull the rod tip down until the lead touches down on the lake bed. This can be very tricky in water shallower than five foot, but when fishing deeper water, it's normally not too difficult. If you feel the lead crack down solidly, it means the lead has hit a firmer area of lake bed, often hard clay or gravel. However, if it hits the bottom softly, then the lead has either landed in soft silt or potentially in weed. If you can't feel your lead hit the bottom at all, it's either because the water you're fishing is very shallow or your lead has landed into very thick weed or very deep soft silt. One thing to keep in mind is the depth of water you're fishing. Once your rig hits the surface and you're feeling that lead down, the rig will actually start to swing back towards you. The deeper the water you're fishing, the further the lead will swing back. So it's important to remember this when baiting up. If you're fishing in very deep water, you might want to consider baiting up closer in than where your rig actually hit the surface. It's a bit of a guessing game knowing exactly how far that rig is swinging back towards you, but by feeling the lead down and finding out the depth of water, you can get closer and you can be more accurate. Now you can cast the same distance every time using a line clip, but how are you going to know exactly where to aim that cast in the middle of the night when it's pitch black? This is why it's important to have a far bank marker. This can be anything on the far bank which you'll be able to see in the hours of darkness. The easiest things to use as far bank markers are tops of trees or whether trees meet in a V. You can actually use anything which is silhouetted against the sky, just make sure it's not something that's going to move. So we've looked at the overarm cast which is used for most fishing situations. Now we're going to take a look at the underarm cast. This is probably a little bit harder to master for most people, but when fishing really small waters, it can be an extremely effective way to cast. Firstly, the length of line you have hanging from your rod is longer than you would have if you were doing an overarm cast. You want the length of line to be about down to the reel. You want to keep everything in line. My eye is in line with the rod and the rod is in line with the exact spot that I want to hit. Take your forefinger, hold it against the rod, open the bail arm, check that the line isn't tangled around the rod tip and simply start swinging the lead back and forth. This builds up momentum. If you try to cast from the lead being at a standstill, you can't really get any distance. But by building momentum, swinging the lead back and forth, you can get some good distance. And when you're ready, you simply let go with your finger and make the cast. If you're using the underarm cast at a very short distance, you can simply keep that lead really close to the surface of the water and just stop with your other hand when you reach the spot that you want to fish. However, if you want to cast further, you need to aim a lot higher. Once you master the underarm cast, it will really help you fish anywhere which requires a short, accurate cast. But like anything, it takes a lot of practice. The best way to practice if you can't actually go out fishing on the bank is to set up a small bucket in your garden and just keep constantly casting that lead and trying to get it in there. Anyway, good luck with your casting. Hope you've learned a thing or two about fishing accurately. If you want to learn more about fishing, then click one of these two videos here for plenty more useful tutorial videos.